Hello and welcome. My name is Mark. This is Riffle Shuffle and Roll. And today I'm excited to teach you my very first major design. And that is a game called Cupid. If it's your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified about new games every week. Cupid is a trick-taking card game for two players. This is a racing game where the first player to reach 121 points or more wins the game. And it does not matter when they reach that threshold. It could be at the beginning of a round, in the middle of a round. Whenever a player reaches 121 points or more, they win. How do you move? How do you get to the finish line? Well, that all depends on the cards that are played to the trick. There are a few different things that can happen. Cards can be combined for a greater total, or maybe you will find the difference between the two cards in the trick. And there's even a chance that the trick could be worth nothing. With all that said, let's dive in and learn how to play Cupid. In order to play Cupid, all you need is a 52 card deck that we're gonna cut down to 24 cards and a way to keep score. This game was designed with the idea of using a cribbage board. If you do not have a cribbage board, I recommend using a life counter app like this one. I'll put a link for this app down in the description. Uh, it makes it very easy to increase your score by counting. And if you wanna just make a big jump doing the math in your head, you can do that as well and set the score to it. There are printable reference cards and a rule sheet available online if you would like to print them. I will link to them down below in the description. To prepare the deck for the game, you're going to want to keep Ace through 10 in just the Spades and the Heart Suit. In this game, Aces are one. Now thematically, Spades are arrows and Hearts are hearts. There are also four characters in this game that can be represented with face cards and the Joker. So Anima, the lowest card, is the Queen of Diamonds. The monster, who sits right in the middle, is the Jack of Clubs. And the King of Hearts, the highest ranking card in the deck, is Cupid. Then we have the Joker. This is Zephyr, the god of the wind. And all of these character cards either interact with each other in an interesting way or have an effect on the trick. So here's the ranking structure of the deck for Cupid. It's gonna be a little odd to have these face cards out of their normal position, but just remember they represent characters and when you consider the story that is taking place, uh, their placement makes sense. So here we have the Joker at the very bottom of the ranking structure with the queen right next to him. And as we move up the rank, you'll notice that we alternate suits, hearts, spades, hearts, spades, hearts, spades, and so on, with the jack right in the middle, all the way up to the king, which represents Cupid. To determine the first dealer for the game, each player should draw the top card from the deck. Whoever draws the lowest ranking card deals first. Shuffle the cards and deal five to each player, one card at a time. Then deal two face down to form the prize trick. This is won by the player who wins the final trick for the round. Place the rest of the cards face down to form a draw pile and turn up your first card. The dealer also leads the first trick. We will play that our dealer is here at the bottom of the screen. They may lead the first trick with any card from their hand. All right, now before we continue with gameplay, I wanna take a minute to just go over all the different trick possibilities. And there's a lot that can happen within the trick depending on which cards are played. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those and then we'll get back into gameplay. If you wanna just jump ahead to the gameplay, there's a timestamp in the description. All right, let's go ahead and look at some trick examples here. We're gonna start with just the numbered cards. And when a spade and heart is played to the trick, the highest card wins, and then the numbers are added together. So the player at the bottom of the screen here, player two, wins the trick and they earn 12 points. When two hearts are played to the trick, again, the highest number wins, but the two numbers are subtracted. So player one wins the trick and only earns four points. When two spades are played to the trick, the highest number wins, but 
the trick is only worth one point. So player two wins, but they only get one. When two cards of the same rank are played to the trick, the spade will always win. Just remember that the arrow pierces the heart. And in this case, the player playing the seven of spades will have won a 14 point trick. Now let's take a look at the character cards. Whenever a character card is in the trick with a number, the character is worth zero points. And then the winner of the trick will earn the number on the other card. So the king or cupid is the highest ranking card in the game. It wins the trick and that player earns nine points. The queen or anima is the lowest card in the deck. So the four wins the trick. Anima is worth zero here and player one gets four points. Now the monster or the jack here is pretty interesting because it only beats about half the deck. But if the jack wins the trick, the trick loser has to lead. And as you will see in this game, leading is not necessarily a good thing. So here, player one wins the trick. They earn four points. And the trick loser would lead next. If the opposite player were to play a card higher ranked than the jack, like this eight of spades, then that player wins the trick. They earn eight points and they would still lead. Now let's talk about the character cards and how they interact with each other in the trick. So first we have our queen, which is the lowest ranking card and is typically captured by anything except for the joker and the king. When the queen and the king are played to the same trick, the queen wins. Just like in the story, Anima captures Cupid's heart. Here, queen beats the king. And when this occurs, that player earns 22 points. When the queen and the jack are in the same trick together, the jack wins. And again, that is worth 22 points. And the king beats the jack for 22 points. Now the Joker, which represents Zephyr, the god of the wind, never wins the trick. They always lose, but it blows the trick up, making it worth zero points. So it does not matter if an opponent plays a number card or a character card. They will win the trick, but it will be worth zero points. And those are all the different trick examples. So you can see there's a lot of different possibilities that can happen during gameplay. Let's go ahead and continue with the actual game. We will play that our dealer is here at the bottom of the screen. They may lead the first trick with any card from their hand. They lead the trick with the two of spades. Now the opposite player may play any card from their hand. They play the six of hearts and they win the trick. So first they add up their card points for the trick. So it's a red and a black card, so they add them together. This trick is worth eight points. They go ahead and add that to their score. Then they collect the trick and place it off to the side. Now the trick winner gets to choose. Do they want the turn up card or do they want to draw blindly from the draw pile? Well here the player is going to go ahead and draw from the draw pile and add that card to their hand. The trick loser then must take the turn up card. If the trick winner would have taken the turn up card, the trick loser would have had to draw from the draw pile. Then the trick loser also turns up the next card. Now the trick winner leads the next trick. They play out the ace of spades. The opposite player can play any card from their hand. They go ahead and play out the three of hearts. The three of hearts wins this trick. It's red and black, so they add it together and they earn four points. They add that to their score. Then they collect the trick, place it to the side and choose which card they want. The trick loser takes the opposite card. The trick loser also turns up the next card. Play like this continues until we get to the final trick. So let's go ahead and fast forward. On your way to the final trick, you will eventually run out of cards in the draw pile. When that occurs, each player will have five cards left in their hand. 
the last five tricks are played out like normal, with the trick winner leading the next one. Unless, of course, they win with the Jack of Clubs. All right, now let's fast forward to the final trick. So when the last trick is played, whoever wins that trick also earns and scores the prize trick. So here the 10 of spades wins, that player gets 18 points. So let's go ahead and add that to the score. They can collect those cards and move them off to the side. They also get the prize trick. Whatever the value of the prize trick is, they earn. In this case, it's an extra two points. So here we are at the end of the round and our blue player is in the lead with 56. The player with the most points at the end of the round collects the cards and becomes the next dealer. They will also lead the first trick. Continue playing rounds until one player reaches 121 points or more. And it's important to remember that the game ends immediately once somebody hits 121 points. So if this were a trick being played, doesn't matter when, in the middle of the round, in the beginning of the round, this player would win the trick with 13 points and they would get to add that to their score. And they would immediately win the game. And that's how to play Cupid. So from my perspective, this is actually a bit of a heavier game. You have to remember all the different trick interactions. You need to remember what the character cards do and how they interact with each other in the trick. And there's also an element of card counting. Even though you only have five cards at a time, as the game progresses, as the round progresses, you will tend to figure out what is in your opponent's hand. And that will help you decide on which cards to hold onto and which to get rid of. It's not always a good thing to win a trick in this game. That's because it is a racing game. It's not about winning tricks, it's about moving ahead as fast as you can. So you have to keep that in mind while you play. And as a round progresses, and you start to figure out what your opponent's holding and maybe even what's in that prize trick, then you can start playing cards with real confidence knowing that you're gonna be getting some really good totals, some really good um, high value tricks when it matters most. And ah, I really love the character cards in this game. Now, originally Cupid and uh, Cupid and Anima, the king and the queen, were just meant to counteract each other. I wanted to remove any safe leads. And two safe leads in trick-taking games is playing out the highest ranking card, because it's a sure trick, or sloughing off and playing the lowest ranking card, because that's a, a sure way to lose the trick. So by creating the Cupid and Anima player interaction, or card interaction, I took both of those leads away. One thing that I've heard often is that there are no safe leads in this game, and it is not a good thing to lead necessarily. And that is what I wanted. That is what makes this game a challenge and what makes it unique. Now, later on, the Jack of Clubs came into play, Monster. I wanted a card that kind of rounded out the rock, paper, scissors element along with Cupid and Anima. So then you have the uh, monster, the Jack, being able to capture Anima. Anima being able to capture the, the king and the king being able to capture the jack. Perfect, you've got this nice balance of, of watching for certain cards to be played, trying to trap your opponent into playing a character card that you can catch for a really big total. And then there's the bomb, Zephyr, the Joker, the, the card that loses the trick but essentially blows it up, making it worth nothing. That is a nice little addition that uh, Sean Ross and I came to while we were playing. I wanted one more card because I needed a prize trick rather than just a single prize card. And ah, it was perfect. And it worked perfectly well with the story because Zephyr the Wind God whisked Anima away, um, did uh, Cupid a favor and got those two together. So it worked out perfectly thematically and uh, and with gameplay. So yeah, that is Cupid. I am gonna follow this up with a little dev blog, possibly uh, through, through the card talk format. So you can look forward to that and kind of get a little more insight into what went into making the game. Um, since then, I've done 9.9 and Sishara 6 is on the way 
and a little game called Goose and a little game called Hot Dog. And they all, they all have different levels of involvement required of them because of the depth of the game. But this, this one took, I think, right around six months altogether of constant tinkering and constant play. And I really have Bram Tebbit to thank for this most because he was there for almost every single game, especially in the probably first two thirds of his development. And then I gotta thank Taylor Reiner and Sean Ross for their help with this game as well. They were very informative in the development process. And uh, yeah, Taylor's actually got a video review of Cupid already. It's been out for a while. All right, well, I wanna save some goodies, some good stuff for the, uh, the dev blog here for Card Talk, so I won't go on it any longer. Thank you for watching. As always, stay tuned for more games. And until then, keep on playing.